Heartstrings will be tugged on today's tragic Miami Vice. The Good Caller was written by Dennis Cooper and directed by Mario DeLeo, and it features a couple of very fine guest performances by a couple of relatively unknown actors. While on a stakeout in a neighborhood ruled by street gangs, Crockett is approached by a nervous young high school student named Archie, who mistakes him for someone he was supposed to give an envelope to in exchange for some cash. The envelope turns out to contain black tar heroin, so Crockett busts Archie. The arrest is interrupted by the arrival of a street gang called the Apostles. Tubbs ends up chasing down one of the Apostles, who turns out to be an undercover cop named Ramirez, who is played by Ju Garcia, who at this point in his career was acting under the name Nick Corey. Nick Corey, or Ju Garcia, is one of those actors who always seem to be on the cusp of a breakthrough in the 80s. He first popped up on my radar playing Anthony Edwards' roommate in the utterly terrible 1985 Cold War spy thriller Gotcha, and then he'd kind of crop up all over the place without ever having a single big breakthrough, despite having the freakish good looks of a bona fide movie star. Crockett Tubbs and Ramirez are joined by Ramirez's boss in the Metro Gang Unit, Lieutenant Atkins, who is played by the late John Spencer of L.A. Law and The West Wing. Atkins gives them the scoop on the black tar heroin. It's being moved by a gang led by a teenager named Count Curtis Walker. Crockett and Tubbs interrogate a distraught Archie who swears he had no idea what was in the package. He's a high school football star who was doing a favor for Count Walker's right-hand man Luther because he needed some quick cash to buy a pair of cleats for a big game that college scouts are scheduled to attend. Because of his arrest, he'll get kicked off the team and lose his chance at a college scholarship. Former college football superstar Crockett is deeply sympathetic to Archie's plight. Archie is played by Vincent Keith Ford, who currently acts under the name Keith Diamond, who's had a very respectable career in television without ever having what would be considered a breakthrough role. Which is surprising, because he's fantastic in this episode. He makes Archie very sympathetic, and we understand why Crockett becomes emotionally invested in Archie's plight. The interrogation is interrupted by the arrival of Ed McCain, played by Charles S. Dutton, star of the Fox series Rock, who also appeared briefly in the season two premiere. McCain runs a halfway house that Archie's grandmother works at, and he's close to Archie. He swears to Crockett that Archie's a good kid. The Vice team meets with Lieutenant Atkins, and everyone's in agreement that it would be beneficial for Vice to work with Archie to bust Luther in exchange for drop charges. So while Crockett and Tubbs shadow him, Archie gives the heroin back to Luther. It goes poorly, and Luther tries to shoot Crockett and Tubbs, but Archie tackles him, and Crockett and Tubbs are able to make the bust. Assistant State Attorney Pepin, who is played by Terry Kinney, McManus on HBO's Oz, agrees to drop all charges against Archie. Crockett drops by Archie's house to tell him the good news. He meets his grandmother, slips him some cash so he can buy his cleats, and gives him his Gator Bowl football. How Much Did You Get For Your Soul by The Pretenders plays over a montage of young Count Walker, played by Samuel Graham, being driven around his neighborhood in a limousine while selling black tar heroin to the local kids. Tubbs and Crockett try to get in good with Count Walker, but he blows them off because he doesn't do business with grown-ups. At a diner, Crockett and Tubbs secretly meet with Ramirez, who tells them the Apostles are starting a war with Count Walker. Immediately thereafter, Ramirez, a bunch of Apostles, and a hapless ice cream vendor who happened to be in the wrong place, are blown to pieces by one of Walker's gang members. Due to newly heightened tensions between gangs, a riot breaks out at the high school, and Archie is swept up in the arrests. Because of this new arrest, Pepin revokes his agreement to drop all charges against Archie, unless Archie agrees to wear a wire and get Count Walker on tape admitting to selling the heroin. Outraged by this, Crockett gets into a big fight with Pepin, and then tells Archie he will lie and claim that he searched Archie's car illegally and get the case thrown out of court. Being a good kid, Archie refuses to let Crockett lie for him and agrees to wear the wire. While Simply Red's picture book plays, Archie meets with Count Walker and gets a confession of guilt, but the wire is discovered and Count Walker shoots him. Crockett and Tubbs arrest Count Walker, but they find Archie dead in the back of the limo. In an earlier season, back when the show was under Michael Mann's supervision, the episode would have ended right there on a freeze frame of Crockett cradling Archie's body. We're firmly in Dick Wolf territory now, so the episode continues on for quite a while longer. Crockett breaks down in the limousine in anger and sorrow. He visits Archie's home to pay his respects to the family, but McCain refuses to let him in, and Archie's grandmother returns his Gator Bowl football. Lieutenant Atkins drives by to tell Crockett that, thanks to the arrest of Count Walker, the streets are cleared of gangs for the first time in a long while. Finally, Crockett dumps his Gator Bowl ball in the trash and sadly walks back to his Ferrari. We didn't need any of that. Nothing that happened there was more important than that image of Crockett cradling Archie's body. When I said back in my review of the season three premiere that Dick Wolf tends to over-explain things, this is exactly what I was talking about. I already miss the old Miami Vice 
which would provide the barest minimum of information necessary and trust viewers to be sharp enough to fill in the gaps. Here, by aiming for a story that's told in a way that's more traditional and more conventional and less stylized, Miami Vice has given us an episode of a very good cop show, but not necessarily a very good episode of Miami Vice. The very traditional way this story is told would be perfect for any of Dick Wolf's other high-quality cop shows. Law & Order, Chicago PD, New York Undercover. But it's not the right fit for Miami Vice. Even still, I am giving this episode four flamingos because it tells that story well, and it's anchored by a beautifully sympathetic performance by Keith Diamond as Archie. Next time, Crockett's grip on his sanity begins to slip when he gets into the head of a creepy cat burglar. That's a good one, so be sure to join me then. In the meantime, if you'd like to weigh in on whether you prefer Dick Wolf or Michael Mann, find me on Twitter, and I will see you later. Thank you. Goodbye.